The relationship, and in fact it eventually came close to that in England, the most democratic of the European nations in the 19th century. But on the continent, the citizen more served the state than the state the citizen. The rise of democratic government was slow, interrupted, still incomplete on the eve of World War I. Here, as in so many other areas of influence, the results of the French Revolution extended across the century. Culturally, the French Revolution provided the world with its first meaningful experience with political ideology. The word and the concept it expressed were revolutionary in origin. Indeed, it was Napoleon, a man who had no truck with idle thought, who called the intellectual system makers of the late 18th century ideologues, abstractionists, or as we have heard in recent years, eggheads. The father of the DuPont, who founded the famous American chemical company, was called an ideologue by Napoleon. And this, Pierre Samuel DuPont de Nemours, spent a lifetime drawing up constitutions, writing letters, while also finding time to offer a learned paper to the American Philosophical Society on the language of ants, and to inform his son that gout was the disease of the intellectual. However, DuPont was not a brilliant mind, and Napoleon was an opinionated soul. Despite these two figures, ideology triumphed. It directed the French Revolution, and it soon grew like roses on a bush or the heads of a hydra, a matter of outlook, of course, to provide the 19th century with an unusual number of competing theoretical social systems. What was ideology? It was and remains a system of ideas that are usually goal-directed. Thus, it is a theoretical explanation of the world's situation and a prescription for improvement or radical change of that situation. In this sense, ideology is rooted in historical consciousness, in an awareness of mankind's progress through time and how that progress might be redirected toward an alternate objective. Most ideologies are, therefore, fundamentally political. Bright descriptions of the means and methods by which the instruments of revolution, party, or government ought to be used for the purpose of social change. Ideology is, in a way, the secular equivalent of theology. It directs the believer's attention to a perfected future when present woes will have dissipated and social harmony will reign. The future, therefore, holds the promise for the ideologue that heaven holds for the devout, religious-minded individual. The introduction of ideology into the modern world was one major effect of the new secular spirit of the 18th century. Once society was deemed to be man-made, and here the influence of the Enlightenment is noticeable, then it could be changed. Ideology was the prescription. And the force of ideology was felt throughout the modern era. In rhetoric and institution, the French Revolution was a liberal revolution in which the liberty of the individual was proclaimed private property was respected. Later, when Napoleon announced his doctrine of careers open to talent, he was following revolutionary thought and also anticipating the Horatio Alger theme of pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. In truth, the ideology of the revolution amounted to extended praise of the self-made man. The French Revolution had a quality of spontaneity, of accident, that later revolutions would not have. There was no clearly defined revolutionary party 
or conspiratorial group that initially plotted the revolution and the contending factions that followed after the revolution had occurred never gained a firm grip on the nation's imagination or its institutions. It must be remembered that the French Revolution was the first major social revolution of far greater dimensions and of deeper purpose than the American Revolution that had preceded it. Only the Russian Revolution of November 1917, one that ushered in modern communism, would rival in world importance what occurred in France between 1789 and 1799. Underlying this extended dramatic development was the new belief that revolution was the most effective means to achieve political and consequently social change. Not reform from within, but overthrow from without appeared to be the new law of political physics. The 10 years of the French Revolution have since been reviewed in terms of the old historical concern with change and continuity. To the revolutionary demand for a new secular order came the conservative response that society can never be built anew. According to this interpretation, we were all inescapably part of our own age, historically determined, hence socially indebted to previous generations. The usual analogy made to support this argument was that of a house. The present occupant can renovate, alter, add new wings, but if an attempt is made to remove the foundation, the whole structure will collapse. At the basis of the debate over what the French Revolution could and did accomplish is to be found the 19th century concern with liberalism and conservatism. To sweep away the old and begin the new was the liberal solution. It was predicated upon the assumption that human nature was essentially good, mankind essentially rational, and the purpose of life, the pursuit of earthly happiness. To respect the past, to work within the social structure that now exists so that it is modified, not destroyed, was the conservative solution. It was predicated upon the assumption that human nature was weak, mankind essentially selfish, and the purpose of life, the search for social stability and order. Equally enduring as a historical problem was the position of the French Revolution on the time scale. Was the revolution the end of one era or was it the beginning of another? It seems to have been both. It ended a world based on tradition, on blood right, on fixed social status. In principle and by legislation, it made the individual citizen the center of a new social order. The social order should, therefore, be designed to maximize this freedom, this personal liberty. In sum, the French Revolution did many things, unleashed new forces, destroyed old ideas, offered new promises. Not the revolution itself, of course, but the people who made it.